Hello my soccer universe. Fans of Liga or Serie A might moan about the bad fate that their clubs had on Thursday evening. Overall, very, very meager showing for those two leagues. However, if I look at it overall, it is the Austrian league that really, really got a beat down of the highest degree. And it kind of shows that the Austrian league, I knew that uh, this year's crop will not be a good one because yes there's Salzburg and big credit to them of making already two points in the Champions Ch League and big name teams uh, there's Sturm Graz where I had some hope but you know being in the Europa League I knew they will be a little bit out of sorts because uh, they still are trying in the finding phase Austria Vienna is way too young I had some hope that Rapid will do something in the Conference League. I was hoping that they're not qualifying for the... No, they couldn't have qualified. So I really thought that they, because they would have a good seeding, and maybe Wolfsburg also would have had, had a good seeding, but those two, of course, failed. So from the beginning, I really thought this will not be a good year. And despite a week ago, the Austrian team showing actually quite well. And I was a really positive performance, especially by Sturm Graz. I really thought going to Feyenoord, who had had a beat down, absolute beat down against Lazio, that only at the end got a little bit uh, more beautiful uh, for them. Better looking, not beautiful, it was not beautiful at all. Uh, I really thought that Sturm actually may have a chance, especially since there's a history of Austrian teams uh, eliminating or getting uh, points against Feyenoord. Now, there was nothing like that. Um, the first goal that came was amateur-like. Then their new striker, Omega, who is from Rotterdam. And a lot of the build-up was that uh, he ha he's playing finally for his family. Um, uh, you know, it's the first time they can see him. He, of course, played for Sparta, Rotterdam, and then Gernotrana. And Austrian takes him out and he probably has a, a rather rough shoulder in injury. So, yeah. Uh, and that completely derailed Sturm Schirm Graz. So, they completely fell apart after that. So, um, was not a good showing. Austria Vienna... Also, um, you know, nice going forward, but a big hole in midfield and you cannot succeed on this level. And so the Austrians are <laughs> on Thursday, zero points, one goal score, 10, point, 10 goals conceded. An absolute, absolute disaster for the Austrian league. Uh, and now it, it, one has to see how it will go, uh, look like going forward. Um, I mentioned already Serie A, I mean also two absolute beatdowns away from home for both Lazio and Fiorentina. Not necessarily expected uh, that, especially Lazio's must hurt uh, big time because they had such a good showing last week and now they are completely in a bad situation. And that group, which Sturm Graz, Lazio, Feyenoord, the Mitulat, is uh, the, one of the maddest groups I've ever seen because uh, whoever won last week lost this week and the scores are getting more and more lopsided. Uh, it, it's really uh, boggles the mind. I mean, Sturm Graz, <laughs> Amazon, sorry, no, last started with Lazio. Lazio beat Feyenoord 4 2. Uh, is beaten by Midtjylland 5 1 who is then beaten by Sturm Graz 1-0, who are then beaten by Feyenoord 6-0. Crazy group. So, Italian teams, yes, and even the Roma win was not a good one, to be honest. And then French teams, even or uh, Ligue 1 teams, it's not French teams, it's Ligue 1 teams, uh, even more dis uh, dis disappointing uh, to, to a certain degree, with Monaco losing at home to Ferenc Varos, uh, not being completely demolished in Karabakh, Rennes throwing away a lead uh, at home, uh, against Fenerbahce and also um, Nice throwing away a lead at uh, Partizan. Not as bad as the Italians, or well, maybe the Italians have made more points, but you know, it's not good. On the positive side, Spanish teams all cruising, English teams, okay, there were only two uh, yesterday, all cruising. Uh, Dutch teams also uh, looking quite good. Portuguese teams, there's only one in India, but Braga doing quite well as well. So yeah, a lot of preamble and uh, the last thing I want to say, uh, there actually were quite some goals yesterday as well. I mean, it was completely the opposite. 
Um, and we'll see now that the average goals in both of the Europa League and the Europa Conference League are now on par with the Champions League, which you, you usually there's a clear draw, draw by the Champions League, Europa League, and then the Conference League in terms of goals. Now they're all around 2.7, which is kind of the average. So uh, while the Champions League definitely dropped, those two actually increased. Let's run through some remarkable results and I put again emphasis on games that I either saw, which were eight uh, in the conference and uh, also uh, of the teams that are playing in the eight leagues that I usually, usually cover. That's why Real Sociedad, I mean, it uh, had a little work, uh, work to do. They were largely uh, dominant, but they had to uh, get an equalizer and sort of get a winner for Real Sociedad. Uh, United um, settled it early with Eriksen assisting Sancho and then a penalty for Cristiano. And it's 2-0 uh, United settled there. I already said about Sturm Graz, there was the, uh, the I mean, the Jahan Baksh, uh first goal, it was such a weird freak. I mean, it's a freak he played out and everyone expects a cross and he plays it to the near near corner into goal. I mean, it's an amateur goal to concede to, to the ones because you cannot open that side. I'm not even sure if it was planned. Then the injury to Omega and then, I mean, there were really nice goals in there by Feyenoord. By Fe you know, they even had one um, this allowed uh, Jahan Baksh, I think who is a defender, actually would have scored a hat-trick if that would, would, would have counted. Jimenez brings the, it all, uh, but it was just Sturm Graz falling completely apart and Feyenoord not letting up. And that's a Feyenoord team that of the starting 11 in the Europa Conference Final, only three were still in the squad. I mean, there was a huge amount of people, so credit Arne Slot for a really good work there. The... For me, one of the WTF results of the evening was the Mitchell and Lazio game. Because for about 25 minutes, there was nothing happening in this game. And then suddenly Paulinho uh, catches the Lazio defense off guard. And then Cabo, a few minutes later, makes it 2-0. And the game is going one way. Lazio or Bob Nerb conceding one penalty. Milinko Sarge pulls from back. Goalie mistake there. Ivanda misses the penalty, but on the re rebound, Isaacson scores. And then Svechenko makes it 5 Lazio also completely falling apart. This is very un-Italian like and I have to say the knives are probably out for Sari already. I am wearing Freiburg and I didn't mention the German teams because outside of Union Berlin they really did well. And Freiburg was one of the big surprises uh, so, so, so far because they are not only good in the Bundesliga but they are also really 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 good uh, in the Europa League and they took uh, Olympiacos apart like uh, you would see normally like their Champions League team. Uh, it was really that impressive. I mean, Grifo assisting Höfler very, very early on. Then Gregorich scores two on both sides of the half. And uh, Olympiakos didn't ha even have a chance, despite uh, how James Rodriguez being uh, presented to the adoring crowds. It was not a good showing for Olympi Olymp Olympiakos, but I think it was very much down to Freiburg having a really, really, really good night. Watch out for Freiburg. This is a really well coached, well run team. I'm actually quite happy. I mean, it's so weird, uh, but I have to say, especially in the Europa League, the German teams that are in there, I actually like all of them. They are, and, and to a degree that I would actually uh, rank them pretty high in uh, my personal support for the entire league. Not maybe of winning it, but you know, they would be right top four or whatever. Really, really uh, good crop, I gotta say. And Freiburg is definitely one of those teams that you just uh, you just have to adore in a, in a, in in a way. Um, I already said Karabakh completely taken apart by uh, taking apart Nantes. Uh, all goals came in the second half. Um, between six and seven, seven seconds, so it was a horrible 12, 12, 12 minute spell. But not in the end, didn't just do enough. And Monaco, I don't know. This Monaco team is also a little bit of an enigma to me because uh, in the French league, they also are very much up and down. But especially here, uh, losing a ton to Ferenc Varos, that is an absolute disaster, I gotta say. The goal coming late through uh, Vecice in the 79th but they already had an early goal disallowed and, and, and so, so it was not it was coming for them in a way um i actually saw quite some of Trabzonspor Juventus Vesda and i have to say Trabzonspor were the better team and Hamsik uh completely forgotten 
uh, to score the first goal and Therese get uh, the Egyptian guy makes it 2-0 before that Kangwa uh, got sent off with a yellow red which was a little bit harsh I gotta say um, and then Nikolic only pulls one back late but I think Trabzon uh, definitely uh, deserved that uh, win overall then we move on. Uh, Bode 2 1 0 Zurich. Uh, Lanaka with a surprise win um, against Dynamo Kiev. I think this Dynamo Kiev team is, come, is coming a little bit apart. Then Ren. Uh, it was probably a rather uh, tight game from what I could gather from the short highlights, uh, where Terrier and Maya uh, assist each other for the two goals in the 52nd and 54th. And I think it's cruising. Kavechi pulls one back, and again, this is a uh, Benfica team that is really, really well coached and really well put together. I mean, if you look, look at what there are quite some players in there that you um, would recognize, but I still would think that Ren is over, over, over a very capable squad. However, they shoot themselves in the with uh, Re getting a straight red card, and then Valencia with a penalty in stoppage time gets an equalizer, and yeah, uh, the French are not very happy. With that one, I would, I would, I would assume. Uh, Roma's 3 0 win against Helsinki looks like a good result, however. Definitely helped by a 10 0 red card for last man. Uh, yeah, I guess it was it. Then they held on. They held on and took until the 47th minute that Dybala breaks it down. Pellegrini adds a second and Belotti gets also a goal for Roma to make it a 3 0 scoreline. But against a 10 man Helsinki team, I actually would expect a much, much higher scoreline and also them to score a little bit sooner. Um, not good. I mean, this is a team that Lusk took apart last season. And I would say Roma is ahead of Lusk in many ways. Uh, Ludo Goretz, though, kind of back up their good performance against Rome, uh, Roma last uh, week. Uh, yes, they found themselves down to uh, Luis Enrique and Joaquin 2 0, but Despotov pulls one back um, and they were in the, in the game. They, they were pressing, so Canales then makes it safe for a safe fish for Batebiz again, but again, lay down the Rick gets another one. So a 3 2 Ludo Goretz hang, hang, hang there. Watch out for them. Braga, first half, largely outplayed by Union, where Union, uh, they had this great performance in Cologne, uh, every, uh, top of the Bund Bundesliga, but seemingly in the Europa League it doesn't quite click, and the longer the game went on, the less they could get a uh, hold of the game, and then in the end it's Braga who gets the win through, Vitinha, of course, assisted by Orta, who seems to be definitely their best player, and Braga uh, taking already control of that group, um, joined by Union saint gilloise in a very entertaining game where Malmö twice had, had, had the lead, um, twice uh, Union comes back and you know that when it was 2-2, two, two, two minutes later Boniface makes it 3-2. So both of these teams are uh, ahead and we of course have the Arsenal PSV game because of the Queen's funeral being postponed and it will know already it's on the 20th of October. I would assume it's an evening game. The Premier League had to reschedule some, so something. So it's a scheduling mess uh, there definitely. But that would have been a glamour fixture and we got robbed of that. Thank you. Queen Elizabeth. Uh, if we see now the standings, and you see, I have updated the bars. You see, actually, the goal average in the Europa is 2.9, which is ahead of 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 all of the other two. Of course, a big win for Bode Klimt. Dynamo Kiev, a uh, big loss there. We start Ren still on top, but you know, a win would have sent them more or less through to the next round. Now it's a relatively rough um, schedule, uh, but you know. Betis, I think, are the class of their group, uh, and that's between Ludo, Gorenz and Roma. It will very much come, 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 probably come down to the head-to-head -head next uh, week, and Roma probably better get something against Betis, because Ludo, Gorenz is probably going to get six points against Helsinki. That would be my expectation there. So Roma sh definitely should not fall behind. Um, Braga and Union saint as I already said, are uh, ahead in their game. Then uh, Sociedad and, and Manage Manage that I think we would not expect anything else, especially since Sheriff is the only other team that's level. So it will be between those two. And, you know, United probably want to get the first spot. Um, Group F is a moment of absolute crapshoot because, the, as I said, the two teams that were top last week are now bottom and goal difference could, could play a big swing there. I really cannot tell you. Uh, it's um, Feyenoord against Midtjylland coming up and Lazio against Sturm. 
uh, the doubles. Uh, Freiburg very much in control of their group and I would even give uh, Karabakh a slight edge at this moment and don't discount yet Olympiakos. And Group H is also a very interesting and open one with Monaco only three points, although they are probably the best team in there. Ferenc Varsh have already six. That's, that's big, I would say. Um, as for the favorites, uh, we have Arsenal still very much the top favorites, but then there are that and uh, Real Betis there and Freiburg also kind of in there. But you see it's kind of tapering off a little bit there. Um, United probably should be considered as a favorite there, but I, I would actually, yeah, I, I, I don't say I want to cut it, but you see already a few Champions League uh, teams coming in, teams that might very likely finish in third spot. Uh, as I said, uh, next week we have early fixtures. I think the Group F fixtures are the ones that really, really stick out. And Freiburg Nantes is kind of a, you know, France against Germany. There's a lot of France, Germany, Germany, Germany happening and it's not all happy. I hope that this will be at least a happy one. Monaco with a must win against Trabzonspor already. Uh, then I'm looking here, uh, Roma Betis. <laughs> I think it has to be Roma Betis. Uh, and you know, for Un Union, they need to get Union. They need to get something against Mar Malmö and hope that Prague or Union Saint Charles get, get a win to keep themselves in contention. Uh, also, a bit of the Conference League. Um, the Nipro three-one away against Limassol uh, was a, a pretty clear game. I said that looks so decisive against Vaduz. It was everything but. Because despite them taking lead, uh, Goethe very quickly equalizes, and then it was a red card to Büchel. That's kind of put the game into a Z's favor, but it took until the 81st minute that they take the lead again. So about good 20 to 20 minutes, and then they add two more in stoppage time. So uh, not a positive performance. Probably one of the most entertaining matches of the evening was definitely the Nordic duel between Dürer Gardens and Molde. Also largely influenced by a red card because Fofana gives Molde a halftime lead. That is an equal as in the 50th, in the 57th, a yellow red for Fofana. Uh, and Banda almost immediately uh, gives Jurgans the lead. However, Molde come back to the Breivik in the 77th to get an equalizer, and then in stoppage time, Azoro gets the lead. And I, I think the, the go ahead goal for Banda was one of those weird, weird ones that just fell in. But a rather interesting game. Uh, easy win for Hand, uh, Sivospor win at Cluj, Slavia against Balkany. It was an absolute nuts first half with um, Balkany taking twice the lead. In the 23rd to 29th, in the, in the meantime, there was an own goal to equalize. Then Ole Jinka in the 34th and the 41st, Mazopust uh, turn, turn around for Slavia. And then nothing in the second half, except for a red card for Balkany, ma making it not easier. Uh, Punic uh, get a 2-0 as Oslovan and Basel win on the artificial wet artificial pitch uh, in Vilnius. That did not look pretty when you saw the highlights. Um, but Jacques Jeva Fiorentina, I mean, what a cluster mess Fiorentina is. I mean, I would not have expected them to be taken apart by Bajak Shia that much, uh, especially since we know that the Turkish League do have problems. But, you know, Bajak Shia, Gula uh, scores twice, then Ikone sends it off and Traore laid on, makes it a proper result. Hearts uh, win 2 0 in uh, Latvia, 0 uh, 0 between Strava and and uh, underlegged West Ham find themselves down 1-0 early on, but then Lanzini in the 13th, Skamaka in the 25th, and Dawson in the 38th. Make it a proper scoreline, however, thanks to pulls one back, and it is a only a 3-2 win. Villarreal with a second string squad go to Pereshava, uh, take a lead through a penalty, um, and then let it kind of slide, they look safe, uh, and then uh, Hartwell equalizes, but almost immediately Baina uh, gives them the lead again, and then Hapoel is throwing everything at them. However, they give a penalty that is put high by Karp. Karp, 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 Karp. And it seemed every attack by um, Beersheba resulted in a counter-attack uh, from uh, Villarreal. They probably should have made the third one there. But they are the class of the, of, of the, of the group, despite only playing a second-string squad. I think, we, as, as we see with the favorites, there's no bigger favorite than Villarreal. They seem to be uh, head and shoulders above the rest. I saw it already a bit uh, about opposing against Austria, Vienna, although it is a very much uh, game of circumstances. It was an open game where Austria played very well offensively, had had, had him good chances, uh, especially through Gruber, who could have taken a better shot. However, then um, gaping hole in midfield and Izak uh, makes it 1-0. 
Austria Vienna immediately equalizes and then even get a penalty. However, it's badly put and missed. This, and this is very, very, very game then turns. The game stayed rather, rather, rather tell until the 64th when Skorash makes it to one nicely assisted by Pereira. And then Austria Vienna is falling apart and concede two more. Did not look good. Uh, not look good is also something that we have have had to see for current to, to, to be honest. I mean, yes, they have a 2-0 halftime lead through Adam Jan and Dietz, but as soon as Adam Jan, at that point in 10th minute, was a deserved lead, but as soon as that went in, Slovatsko came up and had actually a few good chances. The, the goal by Dietz was definitely against the ra- run of play. And right after the half, uh, Kalbička and Petrzela uh, equalized for Slovatsko, who are then pressing for the third goal. And then their Kavalkova counter gives the penalty. Ljubicic scores that one. Then Ljubicic makes it 4-2. So uh, maybe in the end it was deserved for Cologne, but there was a, a peer period in, in there where this game could have gone a completely diff- different way. Very much a nail biter. Very interesting game overall. Um, and I already said that Partizan uh, found themselves very early down to Nice, but they could e- e- equalize. So no win for any league uh, team. If you look now at the standings here, Fiorentina look bad. I mean, they are still favored to move out of this, this group, but they better get now a win against Hearts uh, because if you cannot beat RFS at home, you definitely need to get the wins against Hearts to maybe salvage a second uh, space spot there. West Ham firmly controlled, I think, and uh, Andrecht also look like the second best team there. As Villarreal has said, a uh, clear favorite in there. It will be tight between the other three teams, but Austria definitely should get their defensive uh, problems in check. I think Group D is a very interesting one as well with Cologne having an early uh, hold on it but they never looked really convincing so I think this is still wide open. Don't overlook Slovatsko the Czech Cup winners. Uh, RZ should win their group and then yeah I think the Dnipro uh, more or less showed that they should, should be the second team. Group F uh, early for Hand and Jurgardens, but I don't think this is over. Molde can make points there. Uh, G Slavia Bra should be the best team in there, um, but you know, should. Sivaspor already enjoying a little lead, and I think Basel should win their group also relatively easy, and then it's a race for the second spot. If we look at the overall favorites, I already said Villarreal ahead of anyone else, even ahead of uh, West Ham which is to the very dense West Ham, uh, then Cologne, and then AZ, and then, you know, it goes a little a little bit more gradual, but I, I would say up until Slavia Praha, of the teams that are currently in the comp, comp, comp competition, those are the most likely ones to win it. However, if I look on the bottom, there's a PSV lingering around, or potentially a Feyenoord, or even Union Berlin, that I would not discount at all at this point, because if they make, make it over, I think they're talented enough to make a deep run in the, in the Conference League. Upcoming games, I mean, a huge one for uh, it for Fiorentina fans at heart. Um, Villarreal against Austria Vienna is, of course, where uh, the Austrian will look at because I, I, it will be another beatdown, I guess, even if Villarreal plays with a second string squad. Um, I'm definitely looking at the Cologne Partisan, the Slovatsko Nice games, uh, and Anderlecht West Ham. That's, that should be one that should be appreciated, on, 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 honestly, especially on that is actually a big European name. Uh, on the second page, I mean, uh, Slavia against Cluj is kind of this uh, Eastern duel that uh, I look out for. But to be honest, uh, this is the group that is a little bit um, outside, I mean, Hent, your gardens, but you know, um, the bottom groups uh, in the Europa League are not the most exciting ones. So yeah, it was a very interesting evening again, uh, no other very positive one if you're an Austrian f- uh, fan, you know, again, the two hearts, I mean, on one side I'm laughing at them, uh, especially Sturm Graz getting the biggest defeat at the hands of Feyenoord. Um, also, it's not all bad for Austria because Austrian players, as we saw with Gregoric and Ljubicic, you know, for the German teams have actually been performing quite well. And Trauna, of course, uh, held, uh, had, had him at one point the uh, Feyenoord captaincy. So uh, it's not all bad from the Austrian perspective. Uh, but, you know, if I look at the larger picture, it did not look good at all. So, yeah, but overall, I think it was entertaining. I sometimes wish that they could switch, have more games on because um, there's a lot of ha- stuff happening. There were quite a few entertaining games in there. I always love Thursday evenings. I love it. And I will never uh, stop declaring my love for these two comp- competitions, which I think, uh, you know, a little bit for hardcore fans, 
what I really enjoyed because you see so many teams that you wouldn't see. Uh, the Champions League is probably the better conquer competition, but there's a certain sameness to it. Any case, with that, I leave you. Uh, please drop a line below if you want to add anything to what I say. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel for see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.